My name is Julie Heinmiller. I'm 67 years old. I've been married to a wonderful man named John for 43 years. I enjoy lots of different things. Biking and hiking and fishing, playing with our grandchildren who range in age from two months to 13. This past year, John and I visited a health wellness facility in Southern California. I felt a little fatigue after some of the hiking. When we returned to Minneapolis, I made an appointment. The doctor noticed I had an irregular heartbeat and it revealed that I was in atrial fibrillation. It was very much a surprise to me because I, I really didn't have any symptoms. We have a good friend who got us in touch with Dr. Friedman at the Mayo Clinic in Rochester, Minnesota. At Mayo Clinic, our core reason to exist is the needs of the patient come first. As technology changes, the way we go about doing that will evolve. We want to get better at it, and AI is a tool that will help us do that better. To detect a weak heart pump has required an ultrasound of the heart called an echocardiogram, a CT scan or an MRI scan, expensive tests, even in resource-rich environments. We had an AI model which could identify the presence of a weak heart pump. You'd feed in a 12-lead electrocardiogram. That's the test where you lay down, and electrodes are put on your chest and the electrical signals are recorded and it very powerfully determined whether or not a weak heart pump was present. We wondered if we could translate what had been done on a 12 lead electrocardiogram to a single lead electrocardiogram from a wearable watch. We used the Apple Watch because Apple had made the data available in HealthKit. We then created an app that you could download into your iPhone that would enable you to automatically transmit any ECG that you recorded on a watch in a secure manner to our servers. The lead scientist who really conceived of the idea and did the technical work was Dr. Zaki Atia. The Apple Watch ECGs are different in how they look than a 12 lead. So we had to process them in a way that would allow us to learn from the 12 leads we record in Mayo and to run them on the Apple Watch. We ran them to the AI, and then we compared it for the patients that had an echocardiogram to see how well the model worked. For the clinical study, I was asked to take a reading every few days and then send it through to the Mayo Clinic. November of 2022, I started feeling a little off. I mentioned to John, gosh, I'm not feeling that great. He suggested that I take one of my readings. It revealed that I was in atrial fibrillation. I found the Mayo app extremely easy to use and very impressed that it was such an efficient way for me to get the information to Dr. Friedman. So very gratifying to see that since the ablation, essentially there's been nothing but sinus rhythm. A really interesting finding in the watch study is that Older individuals were more prone to actually use the watch and transmit data than younger people. It's harder for older people to get into the clinic, to get transportation. They may not drive. And so the ability to screen for diseases at home will be terribly important. In a span of five months, we received 125,000 ECGs from 2,500 people in 46 states and 11 countries. It's completely changing the physics of a clinical trial. The end result is that we now have an artificial intelligence engine, a way of processing an ECG that can detect something that even an expert reader cannot detect. We're now working on moving it from the study stage to the practice, where any Mayo patient would be able to upload their ECGs into the dashboard. We created it in a very efficient way that would get only the data that they need so clinicians can spend more time with their patients, talking to them, listening to them, and treating them. Our vision is to be able to cure, connect, and transform healthcare. And that involves being integrally involved in the development of these new tools that will be so important for identifying dangerous, life-threatening conditions, 
and other health conditions for which there are treatments. I don't feel old. I still feel young and maybe it's because of all these little grandchildren that I'm running after and just having so much fun with. Technology is unbelievable. It really has changed my life with knowing that if I'm not feeling right, I don't have to go through the hassle of making that doctor's appointment and wondering if I'm okay. I have this information immediately, sending it through, knowing that I have this expert looking at my information is so reassuring.